a great pleasure to be invited um, to have this opportunity to speak um, in line with these illustrious speakers today. Um, so some of the points that um, Henrietta raised are actually the, the very reasons that we started the Women Faculty Special Interest Group. Um, and as it happens, we're having our annual get-together meeting next door at 6 o'clock. So everyone um, from all genders and career stages are welcome. But my talk is now, um, is sort of a change in gears. Um, I'm actually an imaging scientist, and I have no conflicts to declare about this, this content. And as I read grants, I have to pay attention to the policies regarding um, <clears throat> the, the sex and gender-based analyses that we do. So um, here I'm just providing some examples of policies from the European Commission, from the NIH, and also from my home country, Canada. Uh, so we definitely have to think about these increasingly. But this is not just a philosophy. For me, it is a very real, um, events, a very real um, biological question. Um, so in this talk, I'll talk about how um, neurodegeneration differs between biological sexes, and this is really mostly driven by aging in this talk because that is what I'm interested in. So when we talk about age, we think of dementia. So there are many types of dementia um, prevalence listed here, and they all have sex differences as well as Parkinson's disease, which is also um, um, related to, to age-related risk factors. And there have been many studies looking at imaging markers of neurodegeneration. Um, my lab also actively uh, works in this field, but as I produce these imaging-based results, I also have to fall back to the biology. And so some of the primary risk factors for neurodegeneration are listed here. And I'll go through them one by one, but all of them um, have a sex angle. So biological sex determines uh, how these risk factors develop and are manifested in the brain. So first, of course, aging uh, is a primary um, risk factor for neurodegeneration. And from the time we are conceived, we our brains are on different trajectories. So males and female, uh, male and female brains actually develop very differently, driven by different hormones. Um, this you may already know. Uh, so female brains are driven by estrogen, so they, de um, they develop to a, to a smaller size um, than male brains at, time, at the time of birth, and then they also remain smaller throughout the adult lives. Um, beyond that, uh, female brains also work differently. So for example, it's been discovered that uh, functional connectivity in females um, is stronger in the default mode network, which is also uh, susceptible to accumulation of amyloid beta. Whereas in males, this, uh, the, this connectivity is um, higher in the visual and sensor motor regions. But there are some, also some very consistent um, sex-driven differences in brain volume, as you see here, uh, in terms of the hippocampus, amygdala, and insula. So uh, there are dramatic hormonal changes throughout the, the lifetimes of, um, of, of males and females, as you can see here with the estrogen. Um, plotted in red in females, um, climbing steeply in um, puberty and falling steeply during and after menopause, whereas the testosterone for males remains relatively stable. And it seems that a lot of the sex-related biological differences are, are related in some way to this. So for example, um, this is data based on the Baltimore Longitudinal Study of Aging. It's a remarkable study consisting of more than uh, 1,500 subjects uh, scanned over uh, more than 20 years. So this longitudinal study revealed that in both sexes, obesity is actually protective against brain volume uh, loss in gray matter but in different regions. But what's uh, worrying is that in females, hypertension, which is a common vascular risk in the older adults, is more associated with uh, brain shrinking in gray matter and less for males. Um, on the other hand, my lab does a lot of resting state uh, functional MRI, just functional MRI in general. So, um, so we and others, um, in fact, this data based on the uh, Leipzig mind, brain, and body study, uh, published a few years ago, demonstrate that in the electrophysiological recordings based on EEG, 
uh, females in the older age group have higher signal variability. So complementing that, my research group discovered um, that older females also have low, um, lower resting state functional MRI signal frequency. So we have yet to really understand how these go together. Um, but on top of that, there are many groups around the world um, who have also been working on the looking at the vascular changes in aging, how they differ across ages uh, and across the sexes. And uh, females are found to have a higher resting cerebral blood flow. This was actually um, part of my postdoctoral work uh, many years ago. But um, in, in females as well, vascular stiffness leads to lower cerebrovascular reactivity, but not in males. So when I read this, I was, I was fascinated. Um, so I'm including some QR codes here for the uh, works or papers uh, coming out of my lab if you're interested in checking them out. At this conference as well, there's a poster based on um, work from Dr. Lee's lab, which I'm listing here. So there's definitely a lot more um, work in this, in this space. My lab also does a lot of diffusion MRI. So we use it to look at um, white matter and gray matter microstructure. So, um, so work by my postdoc, Tyler Robinson, um, QR codes here, also show extensive sex differences in how white matter degenerates in aging. So for example, you see here in, um, in these uh, tables, basically uh, the acronyms represent different white matter tracts. Um, and we're able to detect differences in the spatial patterns of white matter degeneration that differ between uh, males and females. Then now onto genetic risk factors. This is a big concern, um, especially for those with the APOE4. Uh, so this is a, um, an allele that's related to high, uh, late life um, Alzheimer's disease. And <clears throat> women with this allele um, have more advanced brain aging. So this, this, there's quite a big body of work on this topic. You can, you can see in the figure on the right, um, this illustrates the difference between men and women with the same sort of genetic risk. Women are worse off. I should also mention um, work done by um, a former lab member also showed that uh, sex differences can, although genetic factors can produce really dramatic differences in how someone's brain looks. Um, sex differences will definitely trump that. So it's important to actually uh, to recognize this. Um, the sex difference is not just some fringe effect, it is a major effect. Um, cardiovascular disease is the next big one. And male sex, just being male alone, is a greater risk factor for cardiovascular disease than smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, a slew of uh, vascular risk factors. So being male uh, seems to predispose one to, to cardiovascular disease. However, having these risk factors uh, for, for vascular disease is worse for the cognition in females. You see this complexity. So in a way, it's almost like the female heart and brain are more connected than the male heart and brain. Um, if that makes any sense. So, so this is uh, data coming out um, of a paper from McGill University um, based on the UK Biobank data, and they, they show this, this discrepancy, discrepancy between males and females, um, suggesting that um, females are at greater risk. Now, if we talk about diabetes, uh, we'll, we'll talk about how the, the metabolic profile also differs between males and females. So females seems to have a pretty good metabolic profile in terms of having higher insulin sensitivity, lower glucose oxidation, uh, lower fasting glucose. These all seem to be good, except um, they stop after menopause to, to some degree. So menopause in, in females, as I showed earlier, because of this drastic drop in estrogen is a significant event when it comes to neurodegeneration, it really drives things um, and propagates this uh, sex difference. And a work from a lab also looked at um, how normal people, people without um, diabetes, even in the normal range of blood sugar, there's already an association between blood sugar levels and brain function. So 
one does not need to be diagnosed with diabetes to start man manifesting cognitive changes. This is a continuum. So um, the QR code is provided for this paper, just coming out this year. So obesity uh, is, a, is a huge problem in the developed world. And there's, again, a sex difference there. So men tend to have more abdominal adiposity and women more lower body adiposity. And subcutaneous adiposity has been related to brain atrophy, specifically in regions of fundamental to memory. So for example, hippocampus, the thalamus, um, globus pallidus, orbital frontal cortex, but also the caudate. Um, so in our other um, recent work, we showed using diffusion imaging how uh, higher abdominal fat is more adversely um, related to white matter decline or degeneration in females. So you can see on the right-hand side, um, the highlighted regions are regions experiencing um, greater decline, greater degeneration in the white matter um, due to adiposity. Um, in the females, so greater than, than in the males. So um, adiposity is also strongly associated with inflammation, and inflammation is, is horrible for the brain. And in this regard, um, males um, fundamentally have different inflammatory inflammatory patterns. So male cells produce more reactive oxygen species, propagating uh, oxidative stress, uh, promoting um, inflammation. And male brains are inherently associated with a number of inflammation-related neurological disorders, um, not only in development, but also in aging. So on the right here, you can see some um, details on how males and females differ in these different cellular mechanisms. So I've covered normal aging. Now onto some uh, examples of clinical um, conditions. And so Alzheimer's disease is uh, going to be perhaps one of the top two causes of death um, in the world very soon, if it's not already. So in this regard, females are twice as likely to get Alzheimer's disease. So the prevalence is definitely um, not in the female's favor. Females display uh, faster brain atrophy, higher amyloid deposition, higher phosphorylated tau burden, as well as more uh, severe clinical declines. So this is exemplified in this figure here from a recent review. And you can see the dashed line is the male and the um, the solid line is the female. So, so there's that um, sex difference. Then Lewy body dementia is the second most prevalent form of dementia, and this happens to be more of a male form of dementia. So it's more twice as uh, prevalent among males. And women do get it, but they do also manifest Lewy body pathology a lot later in life. What I'm showing here, um, this figure is some data from the Karolinska Institute, where you see the regions being sort of the affected brain regions by Lewy body pathology that are different between men, uh, males and females. And of course, their clinical manifestations are also different. I would even go as far as, say, as to say, um, this form of dementia in males and females are, are, are different clinical phenotypes. Um, another case is frontotemporal dementia. This is equ equivalently um, similarly prevalent in both sexes. However, the clinical and biological manifestations are again different, and the genetic features and clinical phenotypes differ widely between males and females. So here's an example. This uh, map on the right here um, is generally using uh, cortical thickness mapping using MRI where females are shown to have more severe cortical thinning than males in the frontal cortex, and it's shown in green. This is some data from the University of California. So again, very, cl very different clinical manifestations. So it seems obvious now, I hope, um, that when male patients and female patients or simple individuals without clinical, um, overt clinical manifestations, do not nat naturally fit the same model of disease or decline. They do not. And as is researchers, I'm a basic scientist, and if I don't recognize that, I may not have replicable results. I may not have the sensitivity I need 
um, I may be wasting money not designing the right experiments. So I hope I've convinced you of that. And to summarize, there are really extensive sex differences in susceptibility uh, to diseases and also the trajectories of neurodegeneration. Um, this is not only established in biological research, this is also being, becoming established in imaging research. And it is important to consider these differences and their possible origins. So tr I was trained as an engineer. I'm always interested in the why, how. Um, so I think brain mapping is a powerful tool to help us uh, look inside the brain, the living brain. Uh, this is a very powerful tool to understand what kind of sex differences there exist. But we need to, in my opinion, anchor the imaging findings on the actual biology to understand uh, more mechanistically the sex difference because the, the male brain and female brain are not the same brains. Um, so due to the time restriction, I didn't have time to talk about neuroresilience. So um, all of this is pointing to females having more to worry about. So if you're feeling bad, if you're a female, um, I could do a whole other talk on neuroresilience and my lab is also doing your um, modulation in terms of how to improve brain function. So there is a lot of hope, um, but I want to thank my, um, my lab, the, the trainees that I mentioned that uh, published our works and also um, my, the funding agencies in Canada that fund my research and thank you for your attention. Thank you so 